boys and girls. Welcome to this week's episode of Explorers. Now, I don't have any birthday messages to give out today. So instead, I thought I would tell you some jokes. Are you ready? Here we go, some jokes. Firstly, what is yellow and dangerous? Shark infested custard! <laughs> no, joke number two. Why does a giraffe have a really long neck? Because his feet are stinky. <laughs> stinky feet. Alright, joke number three. This one comes from Mr. Justin. What is a frog's favourite drink? Why, it's Croca-Cola, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Justin. And our last joke for this, this episode comes to us from Patrick. And Patrick's joke is this. What is brown and sticky? A stick! <laughs> <laughs> brown and sticky. Thank you for that one, Patrick. Now, if you didn't like my jokes, or you think you've got better jokes, well, I want you to send me in your best joke. You can video yourself doing it or write it down and email it in. Watch out for our email at the end of the show. But for now, I'm going to pray and then it's over to Mrs. Apps for some songs. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for explorers and for the fun times that we can have. I pray that we, all the boys and girls out there will be safe, that they will listen and learn something wonderful about you tonight. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's sing our club song now, I Am The Way, The Truth and The Life. Please get up from those sofas, get your actions, and let's sing to our wonderful who is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, we had a few weeks back at Explorers, Mrs. Nicole told us about Romans chapter 5, verse 8, and she said that we could put our own name in that verse, but God demonstrates his own love toward, and put your name there, in that while was still a sinner, Christ died for, and put your name in those blanks. Okay, so as we're singing this song, it is Romans 5, 8, put to song. You could sing it and put your name in, all right? I'm going to be saying us because all of us, it's true of all of us, everyone in the whole entire world, God demonstrated his love towards all of us. And all we have to do is believe that Jesus died for us and we'll get that gift of salvation. But I'd like you to think, if you'd like to try putting your own name there, to make it personal, because it is. It's a personal gift for each and every one of us. So let's sing it together now. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us Christ died for all of us let's sing no you can't get to heaven without 
Who knows what it is? That's right, salvation. S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. All right, we're going to help with your spelling here. All right, so let's all sing together. No, you can't get to heaven without S-A-L-V-A-T-I-O-N. Explorers, uh, welcome to the games time. I hope you're having a wonderful week. You're getting to see a few more people with the lifting of the restrictions. Um, and uh, it's one step closer to being able to see you all again soon, so we look forward to that. Um, our game for this week involves using a feather. So if you can find one outside or your parents have one, we have some colourful ones at our house, so we've used one of those. Try to make it a light one. And basically, we're going to, using uh, blowing air out of, out of our mouths, we're going to try and keep the, uh, the feather up for as long as we can. And as you'll see in our example, you can do it with a group of people, or you can do it on your own, that's fine. And see how long you can keep the feather in the air for. So, have fun having a go, and enjoy watching our attempt to do so. See you all later. Ready? story boys and girls so sit up straight in the chair get comfortable turn your listening ears on open your listening heart and for every boy and girl that is sitting up well and listening well I'm going to give a thousand points all right you can earn yourself a thousand points and you might be able to cash those points in when we see you at Explorers for Real but let's start with praying because that's what we need to do Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our fun things already. Lord, I pray now for this lesson that you'd help us to listen, to learn something wonderful, and that you would change us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is hopefully just a short lesson tonight, uh, but it's very, very important. Now, to recap what we've been learning, we have been learning about the children of Israel during the time after they were freed from slavery in Egypt and when they were in the wilderness journeying to the promised land. And we've been studying the way that they responded to their circumstances. Things got hard for them. And we've been lo looking at the way that they reacted. Now, how did they respond to the hardship? Do you remember? Can you call some of those things out? Call it out at home if you know. How did they respond? They complained. That's right. They were actually very good at complaining and complaining about all sorts of things. Can you think of one thing they complained about? The food. 
That's right, they did. But they also felt sorry for themselves. They also started to rebel against Moses. Do you remember Korah? And they even started to envy each other. Like we learnt about Miriam and Aaron envying Moses last week. So they didn't have very good responses. And as we've had these lessons, we've been trying to think about our responses to this whole pandemic, to this isolation and this lockdown. Boys and girls, how have your responses been? Have you responded with lots of complaining? Have you responded by rebelling against your parents or being envious of those around you? I hope not, boys and girls. Because the children of Israel, they had forgotten what God was doing. God was trying to get them to the promised land. He had something wonderful in mind for the children of Israel. And God has something wonderful in mind for you. Do you remember? This is stretching our brains. Do you remember what God's purpose is for you? It's to become more like Jesus. That's what God wants for you during isolation, that you would be more like Jesus, more kind, more loving, more forgiving, more selfless, not selfish. Now, one thing that has come up over and over and over again is the need for thankfulness. Thankfulness is the antidote, is the answer it helps us to not complain. It helps us to not rebel and be envious. It helps us to become more like Christ. But you know what? Thankfulness is not easy. In fact, what is easy is complaining. That's what comes naturally to us. Complaining is what comes normal to us. Did you know, boys and girls, the devil doesn't want you to be thankful. He'd actually prefer it if you were miserable. Boys and girls, can you imagine if I took these glasses and I just covered them all over in mud and then I went to put them on? What could I see? What would I see? Everywhere I would look, it would look dirty. It would look horrible. It would look awful. And I could look up at a beautiful sky and, oh, it would look awful. I could look at a beautiful flower and, oh, what is that? That's disgusting. I could look at my friends and like, oh, there's something wrong with you today. That's because I'm not seeing clearly. If I put mud on these classes. Boys and girls, a heart that is full of complaining is just like doing that. It's like putting a complaining glasses in front of your eyes. And so everywhere you look, you see things to complain about. Even if you even if like when I've got mud on my face, mud on my glasses, that's not actually the reality. That's not actually what's real. I'm just seeing it incorrectly. When we have a complaining heart, an unthankful heart, everything we see, we can find to complain about. Say for example, mum buys some special ice cream, a special treat. She brings it home. Here, kids, I've, I've bought these ice creams just for you. Now, the right heart, the Christ-like heart, would be to say, thank you, Mum. That's really kind. Wow, this is great. Thank you. The complaining heart says, I don't really like these ones. Couldn't you get the other ones, Mum? Has that ever happened in your house? It's happened in my heart. Maybe that's something that you've said or done. And everywhere you look, you find things to complain about. Boys and girls, we don't want to have a complaining heart. We need to clear away our vision and see what is really happening. And you know what? When your vision is right, when your heart is right, do you know what you're going to start seeing? You are going to start seeing God's goodness to you everywhere. Because God is good. He never stops being good. In fact, he is more good to you 
than we even know. Now let me give you an example from the children of Israel. There's not really a story, but there's something I want us to think about. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5, something really, really interesting and really, really special. You see, when God was speaking to the children of Israel, right at the end of the journey, and they had been journeying for 40 years, they were in the wilderness. And it says, and I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you, and your shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. There's some old words in there, but do you know what that verse means? It means, and I brought a shoe to help me. This is a sandal, as close as I could get to what the children of Israel might have worn. But for 40 years, their shoes never wore out. Every day they put on their shoes, they were as new as the day they got them. Now I don't know about you, but I find it hard to get a pair of shoes to last for my kids for one year. <laughs> I'll be lucky if I can get one year out of some of those shoes. So shoes that lasted for 40 years was, was a miracle. Was a miracle that God gave them for their whole journey. And the Bible tells us that their clothes didn't wear out either. They could put on the same shirt for 40 years and it looked, it looked amazing. This shirt is maybe not even three or four years old and some of the stitching is coming apart already. But boys and girls, God took care of the feet of all the children of Israel for 40 years. Have you ever stopped and thought about that? Have you ever stopped and thought how good God was to them? That he cared so much about them that he gave them shoes that never wore out. They never had to have blisters on their feet. They never had ill-fitting shoes. God loved them so much. He could look after their feet. And those children of Israel, they were so busy looking at everything, looking at Moses, looking at the food, looking at the water, looking at the whatever, complaining, 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 complaining. And yet God's goodness to them was on their feet. It was so close to them, they were literally wearing God's kindness to them. And yet they had their vision muddied with complaining hearts. That all they did was complain. Boys and girls, imagine how different the book, the Bible would read if every morning when they got out of their beds and they got dressed and they put on their shoes, they said, wow, these shoes are still brand new. God, you're so good to me. You love me so much. You care about my feet. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Can you imagine how different the Bible would be if they had stopped every morning and remembered God's goodness to them? Boys and girls, we can criticise the children of Israel because they didn't even acknowledge or thank God for those kindnesses that he gave them. But you know what? We often do the same thing. If we stop looking at the things we want to complain about and start looking at the things God has done for us, we will realize his goodness is all around us. And most of all, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. I have Jesus in my heart. I am saved. I'm going to heaven. God's goodness is inside me. And it's all around me wherever I look. And this helps me to be thankful. Now, boys and girls, we need to learn to be thankful and we need to actually train ourselves in being thankful. So I have a little activity for you to do at home with your mum and dad by yourself, however you want to do it. Now, I've 
got, uh, it's a, called a thankfulness scavenger hunt. I've made four categories of things you can be thankful for, because sometimes it's hard for children to, to look at things practically about what things I can be thankful for. And I made a little list, and those four things that I'm trying to find that I can be thankful for is, firstly, something I can be thankful for that I wear. Secondly, something I can be thankful for that I've eaten this week. Something I can be thankful for because someone showed me kindness. And fourthly, something I'm thankful about God's creation. Now, boys and girls, I challenge you to be able to think of four things this week that you can be thankful for. Now, let me give you the examples and I'll show you what I'm thankful for. The first one, something that I've worn this week. My Ugg boots. Do you know, every year when it's cold, I got these a few years ago, and when it gets to winter, I think, oh, that's right, my Ugg boots. And I pull them out of the cupboard, put my feet in them, and I'm toasty warm. And what a blessing it is to have warm Ugg boots. Ah, something simple. Thank you, God for my own boots that keep me warm in winter. Now, something I'm thankful for that I ate this week. Do you know this week, my thing that I'm thankful for in eating was some soup. Do you know someone in our church, Mrs. Milson, gave me some soup this week. And it was wonderful because I really didn't want to cook anything. And I sat and ate my soup before I went to work and it was delicious. And I'm so thankful for that soup. My third thing, something that I, someone that showed me kindness. Do you know this week was Mother's Day, just, just last weekend. And I have a, a friend, Dineshka. And you know what? A few years ago, Dineshka's mum went to heaven. That means she died. And of all the days that Dineshka could sit at home and be miserable and feel sorry for herself and complain, it would be Mother's Day. But you know what? She came to my door and gave me a Mother's Day card. And I know she gave other people beautiful cards on Mother's Day. What a kind thing to do. It made me feel so special and I was so grateful and she was showing God's kindness to me. And I praise God. And the fourth thing I'm thankful for in creation that I thought about this week was some little yellow butterflies that are all in my yard everywhere. These are not the most attractive butterflies ever, but you know what? My children have spent so much time outside catching butterflies and bringing them in the house and I've had pet butterflies and it's just been a joy. And I praise God for his creation of those little butterflies. Do you know what, boys and girls? God's goodness is all around us. And I could go on and on and on, on about the things he's given me and the people who have been kind to me and his wonderful creation. They're just four examples. Now, boys and girls, when I sat down and I thought about the ways God was good to me, do you know what happened? My heart filled with joy and happiness and thankfulness to God. And I couldn't be miserable. I couldn't complain. I just started clearing my vision and seeing God's goodness all around me. Because he is good and he loves you so much. Boys and girls, if you can... Send me a picture, send me a video, write me a letter, even if it's one thing that you can stop and think about how you are thankful to God. My challenge is to put your thankfulness glasses on and look all around you for God's goodness. Now, just to finish, I've got a very, very simple song that I want to teach you. There's more verses and I'll probably get Mrs. Apps to help me out with it next week. But it goes like this, and this is a wonderful song that you need to learn. It goes like this. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing it with me. God is so good. God
Let's finish Explorers with a prayer of thankfulness to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, forgive us when we've had our eyes and our vision muddied with complaining and being miserable. Lord, we don't want that. And we know you don't want that for us. God, thank you that you are so good to me. That you gave me the Lord Jesus Christ and sent him to be my saviour and die on the cross for me. Lord, I don't deserve that. And Lord, thank you for all the many, many, many ways you show love and kindness to me. Lord, please help me to see it every day. The ways that you are good and you are kind in my life. And I pray that all the boys and girls out there would see your goodness to them every day. Amen. Bye for now. We'll see you next week. Bye.